All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I've tried to make this video a couple times already, but I'm still coughing because I'm recovering from being, you know, sick with the stupid bronchitis or whatever the hell was hacking out of my lungs there for a while. Um, so there will be a lot of, like, I, in the middle of talking, I'll just pause the video and cough because eh, it's kind of gross otherwise. But Minnow did send me something uh, um, where it has uh, all the abilities in Season of Discovery basically been data mined. And so we can look a little bit closer at what's going on with Paladin and answer uh, some questions. Um, a few things uh, really popped up in my mind. So, for example, Avenger Shield is confirmed to be a uh, instant cast ability. It is literally the Wrath Avenger Shield on a 30-second cooldown, um, including all of the damn uh, spell power ratio and attack power ratio uh, b b behind it. So, for example, it's gaining 9% spell power ratio, and it's gaining 9% attack power ratio. I hate the Avenger Shield uh, uh, Wrath script um, precisely for this, um, because uh, it really should be uh, twice the, the spell power ratio than the attack power ratio. It's, it's actually really stupid, if you know how attack power and spell power works. Uh, but yeah, it does require a shield, good to know. Um, and it has a 30 second cooldown, and it's got a... A low but interesting spell power ratio behind it that's only really going to increase the effective damage of the thing by maybe like 70 or 80 damage in the grand scheme of things. <clears throat> Nothing to really write home about, but good stuff to know. Instant cast is a big deal. Um, other interesting things, uh, Crusader Strike is on a 4 second cooldown, still don't know if it procs... Um, uh, judgments or, or uh, seals or anything like that. Uh, traditionally, when uh, Crusader Strike is like this, it doesn't proc seals. Um, just take note of that. Uh, Divine Storm is Divine Storm, and traditionally she has uh, proc seals. Um, she is an instant auto uh, uh, weapon attack. It even says it in the tooltip, an instant weapon attack that causes blah, 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 where there's Crusader Strike, it says an instant strike that causes weapon damage. And th th yeah, those are actually big differences. Um, nothing really all that interesting with Exorcism. <clears throat> Flash of Light is saying some weird stuff. Apparently it has a heal over time, but th that's all we know. Um, which means that there's probably a rune out there that makes a Flash of Light criticals um, heal over time. Uh, that kind of a thing. Uh, Hand of Reckoning is saying some very weird stuff. Uh, so for example, we know that the Taunt has a 10 second cooldown, which is pretty, pretty, pretty uh, uh, speedy. Um... But uh, then it says other weird things like down here, Righteous Fury, not found. Ugh. Hand of Reckoning. We don't want Righteous Fury. Damn it, where is it? Seal of Martyrdom? No. What do you mean spell not found? Whatever. I, I, I can't show it to you right now because apparently this thing is bugging out. I can try refreshing it and see what happens. Uh, there we go. Do it. Okay, thank God. It was bugging out. Okay, cool. <clears throat> It says Righteous, Righteous Fury Instant, and then it goes on to say that it increases your spell damage by 80%, and then you have, you know, um, the damage reduction uh, for uh, damage that takes you below 35% um, life. Um, what's interesting about this is there's no mana cost associated, and we don't even know if it's a spell. So it's like, is it dispellable? Is it not dispellable? If it is dispellable, the fact that it doesn't cost any mana in an insta-cast uh, basically makes it so that it might as well not be uh, dispellable, just costing you a GCD to put it up. Don't really know, so hard to um, say anything about this whatsoever. Uh, there was one really, really good change here uh, that I noticed. Where the hell is it? Let's find you. No, we don't want priest stuff. We want... Um, oh yeah, um, Inspiration Exemplar, it says instant cast, and it has a mana cost, but it doesn't have a duration, which again, we have got questions. Is it dispellable? Is it not dispellable? Is it like an aura? What the hell is going on here? Um, I'm looking for Rebuke. Uh, where the hell is Rebuke? Come on. It should be right here. I gotta do it slower, huh? Beacon, Beacon, Divine Sacrifice, a bunch of exorcisms, Hand of Reckoning, Rebuke. Thank you. All right, so I said before that if Rebuke had a 10-second cooldown, we'd have a different uh, a topic. Um, I changed my opinion on it. Uh, apparently, she does have a 10-second cooldown, um, which is a... It's actually insanely good um, for, for, for Paladin, uh, a 10-second cooldown, to the point where it's actually broken. <clears throat> so, for example... You can now run up to spellcasters to uh, tell them to shut the hell up, and then uh, they have to sit there looking stupid for, for two seconds. 
And then when that's done, they have to uh, recast their spell, and then you can stun them for six seconds. And then by the time they come out of that stun, they have to try to cast uh, the spell again. And by the time they're casting that spell again, you know, lo and behold, you're going to be able to uh, tell them to shut the hell up with rebuke again. Um, you could probably do that pretty consistently off of the six second stun alone, but you start adding any additional stun stuff in, in, in there and it becomes, uh, like basically nightmare fuel. Um, you can definitely, uh, get off the rebuke. Um, it gets even worse. Um, if you don't actually have your six second stun available, you can run up to t uh, people, tell them to shut the hell up for two seconds. And then they try to cast their spell again, which again, it, it wastes a couple seconds theoretically, right? Um, and then you just like stun them, uh, with say a grenade, um, for three seconds. And then they come out of that and then they have to, uh, cast their heal again, which will waste like another two seconds. And if you're following all, um, already, you can just about rebuke, but just in case you can't, uh, rebuke that next spell cast for whatever reason, you just goblin mortar them, uh, for 1.5 second stuns, interrupting their spell casting. And then when they get out of that, then your rebuke is off cooldown. So even if you don't have your six second stun, or if you had to catch somebody using a goblin mortar, um, or the like, so your six second stun is on a, a three second DR, um, the math just basically plays out the same. Um, rebuke on a, a 10 second cooldown is actually quite overpowered, um, believe it or not. So very interesting. Uh, rebuke is, uh, no joke. Um, I will definitely um, rethink that into the equations. Um, but that's basically all I have to say about um, interesting stuff that I found here. Avenger Shield, uh, you need a shield. Instant Cast has some interesting spell power ratio uh, stuff going on behind it. Um, now let's talk uh, gearing. So this is going to switch from PvE to PvP. Um, PvP, uh, it should be pretty obvious to everybody. Um, but if you're going to increase, <sighs> Season of Discovery basically increases everyone's DPS through the roof, right? It's like Paladin DPS goes up by like 100%, and then everybody else's DPS goes up by like 50%, um, which, which was, or, or, or more, nowhere near as much as the Paladin's DPS went up. But everybody else's DPS did go up. Um, which means that um, there's going to be a great devaluing in your gearing um, in concerns with DPS and a great excessive valuing in your Paladin gearing in concern uh, with health and stamina. So I uh, had some people questioning if we can even uh, gear up Paladins to have enough stamina to be able to stand against, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, like, what does Paladin gearing look like in, in this new age of Season of Discovery or something stupid like that? So I just, you know, uh, put up some random stuff here, and let's take a look. Uh, by the way, these numbers are terrifying. And if you played these Paladins um, that I'm about to show you even in Era, they would absolutely um, do terrible, terrible things. They wouldn't be as good as our super well... Um, our super well-refined paladins that hit their HP breakpoints and then maximize uh, their DPS, but these things are still like um, brick shit houses of of uncaring fuck you. Um, so, for example, we have almost six thousand HP here. We've got five thousand nine hundred and eighty-one HP. If you um, use a food buff of any kind, so again, you'd be using the um, the wild blossom berries from Fellwood because they're instantaneous and all you need to do is get out of combat and boom, you have a food buff. Um, this is over um, 6,000 HP. You just gain 10 stamina. So this is easily 6,081 um, HP paladin right here. Uh, what's causing it to be a 6,000 HP paladin? Well, you have Mark of Cthune, um, which gives you, um, <clears throat> basically it's a tank trinket, but it gives you uh, increased chance to hit your target and a bunch of stamina. We like that. Um, we, uh, we have Ring of Reckoning, as we've always had it. Then we also have Signet of the Fallen Defender. Again, chance to hit a ton of stamina, a little bit of armor. Um, then you have, like, weird choices in your boots. Uh, I couldn't find uh, a better option for boots. Um, eight Agility is is close to... Yeah, it's got some strength on it, and Eight Agility is is very close to 1% uh, critical strike chance. Um, this has got 29 stamina, which is absolutely insane. Uh, again, we, we don't care about anything uh, except um, stamina plus stats. Stamina plus stats. That's all you're really going to care about. A great devaluing of DPS and a great uh, increase in, in the value uh, of stamina. Um, this is until I can actually calculate um, uh, what the actual HP breakpoints are in Season of Discovery. 
<clears throat> just know that we're probably going to err on the side of, of just massive stamina bars uh, for a while. And just to see what is theoretically possible uh, for a paladin. You got Avengers uh, leg pieces, you got Avengers helm, you got Avengers breastplate, very easy to get. There's no marshals in here, so you could very easily uh, gain like an additional 10 stamina, but you lose combat stats um, as well. So you could even increase the, the, the HP higher if you really wanted to. There are no talent points in here whatsoever. Um, that'll be important later. Um, but you just, just have like random stuff that just has like all the stats and then nothing but uh, stamina, stamina, stamina. So you might be like, okay, well, we got like, you know, almost six over 6,000 effective HP. Um, what the hell does our combat stats look like? Well, we have over 700 attack power. Um, you've got 14%, almost 14 and a half, uh, um, critical strike chance. And that's before you put in any talent points. And that's with something like Jom Gobbers, um, as opposed to like, you know, a Goblin Mortar or like a Hand of Justice or like a, a, a trinket that increases your critical strike chance. The same, this is actually a massive, uh, critical strike chance, uh, just to be running around with, um, uh, like, like just swinging dick, like no talent points invested whatsoever. Um, that is actually terrifying. Um, the amount of attack power here is actually also um, just just ridiculous. Um, if you look at the damage, and again, no talent points. This thing has a hundred, almost 146 uh, white DPS. Um, to give you an idea of what the hell is going on here, uh, this thing does slightly more damage than my hand of of reckoning paladin. Uh, my, my bad, my, my, my Hand of Rag Paladin. So my Hand of Rag Paladin has like 5,200 HP, and she has like a whopping 190 fire resist and a thick obsidian breastplate. That's how she rolls and, and she gets uh, uh, the job done. But she only has like a, a 131 uh, white DPS with with a similar critical strike chance in, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, part of the reason this is happening, of course, is that we have Might of Minithil, which increases critical strike chance by two. Um, but, uh, when you get done doing the math on, on this damn thing, it's like in season of discovery that the, if whatever this thing makes contact with as a reckoning paladin, it's just, it, it pretty much is going to maul the crap out of or, or, or kill. And it's got 6,000 HP. It doesn't have any resist, which in my opinion is a problem. Um, it doesn't have resist because it's not wearing gear that just naturally comes with resists. So there's no reason to lean into the resistance aspect like you would in a tier two set, uh, for example. So um, my Hand of Rag Paladin might undergo some changes uh, to really emphasize uh, a stamina increase. But I'm going to tell you right now, she's not going to really be getting over um, 5,500 HP um, but uh, with that massive fire resist. So I'll have to look into her and it is what it is. I don't, need, I don't know if it's dead. I don't know if it's still viable. Um, but yeah, this is still a ton of HP, an absolute ton of HP, and, and the and the combat stats are are legitimately terrifying. Um, you can do the math on it if you want. Uh, again, it's like 146 uh, um, uh, white damage base with a, a 14 percent uh, uh, critical, almost a 14.5 percent critical strike chance. No talents put into it whatsoever. And then if you jump on stuff, you're going to do something stupid like uh, um, five auto attack uh, wreck bomb plus uh, um, a, a divine storm. Uh, there may or may not be crusader strike involved there, or it might be cr you're crusader striking people, but you're not divine storming because you took a rebuke or, you know, uh, which, whichever way it is. Um, and then on top of that, uh, you've still got exorcism that you can do damage with. You've still got um, Avenger's shield. So, for example, you could bomb, uh, um, uh, strike somebody, and then switch to a shield really fast and blast them with Avenger's shield if you don't have exorcism. But exorcism is there. Uh, judgment damage is there. And we haven't even talked about Goblin Sapper Charge or um, uh, Goblin Mortar or any other burst trinket. We haven't talked about Jom Gobbers, which um, he's here for, for other reasons. And, of course, I put Burrower Shell on here for, for, for good measure. Um, I, I, the only thing I don't know is, is this enough DPS, uh, to hit a break point? My, my bad, enough HP to hit a break point that you survive, uh, bursts in, um, Season of Discovery. Um, it, it, it's either really close to, to the break point or you need just a little bit more, um, um, stamina, which again, we can easily get through marshals and so forth and so on, yada, yada, yada. Well, let me show you something else 
that is more up my alley, which I just put together for shits and giggles just to see what, what the hell um, it would do. Um, so this is pretty much the exact same gear. You can see we're wearing the exact same rings, the exact same neck piece, the exact same cloak. Um, just all, like, you know, a uh, heavy stamina, uh, insistence, but you can see we have a uh, full eight piece tier three, just because I wanted to do the math on full tier three, um, season of discovery, uh, a, a DPS, like stamina build, like, what does it look like? Might of Minithil, Crusader, you know, all, all, all that good stuff. This is why Jom Gobbers is here. Cause on something like this, you'd want to use, uh, Jom Gobbers, in, in a wreck bomb as opposed to just about any other trinket. But as you can see, we, we are now well and truly over 6,000 HP. Um, with food buff, you'll be like 6,240 hit points on a full tier 3 paladin. What the fuck? Like, excuse me? Um, if you don't know why that is absolutely fucking terrifying, um, full, uh, just, just read the, the final thing down here um, for... Full tier three. Um, it says your cleanse spells also heals the target for 200 HP, which basically means um, if you're forcing this paladin to cleanse, he basically heals himself like crazy. So you're looking at one of the hardest to kill paladins in, in the entire game, um, even, even though he's got no resists on him whatsoever, which I find absolutely amusing. So this thing is like, if you want to go like full brain dead paladin, um, like, you know, time on target, like reckoning stuff, this might be actually 100% legit. Jesus Christ, you could, uh, it's terrifying. Anyways, uh, then I decided to look at the damage and I looked at the damage and I'm like, oh, it does less damage than my hand of rag. Okay. It does significantly less damage than the hand of rag. So you can see here that uh, our damage per second is like 126. The Hand of Rag is 100, uh, my, my, my bad, it's 127. The Hand of Rag is like 132. So you can see it's doing only slightly less damage than the Hand of Rag build in theory. But you have to remember that the Hand of Rag, um, for one, has a Hand of Rag, which means it has a proc on hit um, a DPS effect. Then it also has um, uh, significantly increased um, fire resistance. Uh, but more importantly, the critical strike uh, on this thing is relatively low. So the crit on this thing is only 6.5%, whereas the Hand of Rag build um, has uh, over 14% uh, critical strike chance. Um, so very, very interesting, but dear fucking God, is this thing going to be an absolute monstrosity to try to kill? Um, definitely one of the best uh, combat healer um, builds I can possibly think of. Um, even though you have a, a might of Minithil and you might look completely, it's, it's just this is just nuts. This is this is some sustain. This is the stuff of sustained nightmares, um, right here. Uh, but anyways, the reason why Jom Gobbers is here is that if you're gonna kill anything in a bomb, um, you're gonna want to have Jom Gobbers uh, if you're going to do attempt to kill anything in a bomb. If that makes sense, any sense? Because if you if you time Jom Gobbers correctly, it's it's basically like plus five hundred attack power in a bomb, and then you can see how that might synergize spectacularly um, with all the season of mastery, like you know extra auto attack things you're doing, like you know um, uh, uh, divine storm and then crusader strike. Um, Jom Gobbers is probably crazy um, if you can get your timings down right and you know when to sit on somebody with the damn thing. So, yeah. I am actually, um, I'm happy to see that it's very easy for us to take our HP pool and, and drive it into oblivion. Now I could sacrifice a fair bit of gear here and get like two piece marshals and a bunch of other stuff and then increase the HP pool even higher, but you, you really wouldn't want to do that. I, I, I honestly need to identify the HP breakpoints and then, um, uh, really put the screws to re refining paladin lethality and combat capability, but yeah, you can see how monst uh, how 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 monstrous uh, some of this stuff is, which is kind of terrifying. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's basically all I have to say. Um, but it should be painfully obvious to anybody who knows anything about gearing for paladin in classic World of Warcraft that if you give paladins the ability to like it, it's it's weird. So it's like. If you give paladins the ability to catch somebody better, so that would be specifically like Avenger Shield, right? If you give uh, someone the ability to catch a target better um, using something like Avenger Shield, um, what that's going to do is it means that we don't need a trinket to catch somebody anymore. Uh, and then next thing you know, we can um, 
We can turn that ability to catch someone into more uh, DPS, like with a Jom Gobber's Trinket. Um, if you give us a bunch of extra attack stuff in classic World of Warcraft, like Crusader Strike, like um, Divine Storm, yada, 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 um, uh, e e exorcism on targets, um, the next th we're not going to be like, yay, that's what Paladins and Classic WoW really needed more for, for PvP, more damage. No, all we're going to do is be like, wait, you mean I can just take more stamina now? I don't need um, uh, to, to, I don't need a, a bunch of damage. That's fascinating. Um, so basically, all, all roads are basically leading to Rome here when it comes to um, Paladin gearing in Classic World of Warcraft Season of Discovery. And that is your number one stat is going to be stamina, 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 until I can identify the breakpoints, stamina. It might be resists and stamina um, because you don't really need DPS anymore because they just gave us a bunch of DPS. Now, we're not going to want to fall, you know, below certain um, uh, lethality thresholds. Um, but once we hit the lethality threshold on the Paladin gearing, basically everything else is going to go into stamina. Um, with a with a mindfulness um, to what kind of build are you? Do you want to have mana on the build? Do you not want to have mana on the build? Like, what's going on there? Um, so, very interesting. And that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Um, so, uh, I guess Deus Volt Boys? You know, yeah, yeah, I, I just thought it was nuts. So I was just like, I don't know, I'll fit up a redemption suit with a with stamina heavy focus and see what the hell happens. And the next thing I know, I'm like, w what's the spell power here? I'm, i got to check this real fast. So we have no bonus spell damage, go figure. Um, but we have almost 500 plus healing. <laughs> 52 MP5. Uh, pretty pretty terrifying amounts of spell crit. It's just the fact that we have this massive banner bar this massive health pool. I haven't even put talents in. Wait, this thing actually has some talents in here. That's funny. Uh, yeah, that, that, that is bizarre. Uh, but damn. Um, that, that, that's all I got to say about that is absolutely damn. Uh, I, am, I am very impressed with the 6,100. That's just... It's so much HP. I don't know what to tell you. Now, is it enough? Is it enough for us to survive all the nonsense that's out there? Um, no idea, but I do know that traditionally as paladins, if we can't survive all the nonsense out there, we start leaning on things like burrow or shell. We start leaning on things like, um, bubble is still a, a, a tool in our toolkit, healing potions, whipper root tubers, like, you know, um, arena grandmasters, you know, the drill. Um, and then worst case scenario, I might look at, at things and be like, we're not surviving or sustaining through that at all, unless we have some resistances going. And one of the fascinating things about the changes in season of discovery is, I, I didn't even I didn't even gear up a resistance palette in here, like th there's there's not even I I any resistance stuff going on here whatsoever. But holy crap, um, the the Nax gear you can very very easily let's turn off that you can very very easily just start plugging in things like oh ice bane pauldrons I lose a little bit of stamina but it has strength on it what the hell. And it's got like a, um, an ocean of frost resist, so you can very easily turn these, just snap, the snap of the fingers, turn these builds into just resistance monsters. Because again, all, since they gave us a ton of DPS, just, just built into the class, you do not care anymore about increasing your DPS all that much. All you care about is your um, effective durability. Um, so it becomes, next thing I, resistance builds are suddenly so much more viable because resistance builds only have two stats on them, resistances and stamina, resistances and stamina, which if you know anything about resistances, and yeah, you're, you're double dipping in, in, in your anti-mage uh, caster durability, but you don't have any fucking DPS on your paladin, which, what, which is what makes it suck traditionally. But then they just doubled our DPS for no good fucking reason, so now it's just like, oh, I guess we just throw on resist gear and laugh at everybody and just murder them to death anyways. Uh, Dracova would be proud. That's all I got to say. But anyways, rant over and day is full, boys.